Whether it's a product for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Working you kind of late, ain't they, Carl? I'm on the night shift, no. It's better for the old ones to work late. They got nothing to do nights. Misses asleep anyway, eh? That's right. I'm thirsty, Dad. Can I get a drink? May I? May I? You haven't slept at all. I can get it. All right, go ahead. Get you some good warm water. There we go. Thanks. Isn't it pretty late for you to be up? Yes, but it's a special occasion. We're going to meet my mommy. Oh, I see. I have never seen her really. I was only a baby when she left. Now, how long ago was that? Ten years. She scares me every time I hear that sound. And that's everybody, I guess. I like your hair. I wish my hair was that color. You know, you don't have to worry. You're going to be very pretty. You're going to be a real black Irish beauty someday. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mary, I think you'd better come back to the seat now. Is Mummy's pretty? She is, Daddy? Cold <laughs> water. Cold water. Two more stops to Deerwood, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Are you going to Deerwood? Yes. Now, isn't that silly? That's where I live. I just went into Philadelphia tonight to the theater. Then you can tell us where the hotel is. Which one? We're a great big town, you know. Two hotels. The Bristol. Is it all right? I mean, is it the sort of place I can take my little girl to? One thing I'll say for it, it is respectable. Grover Cleveland slept there. <laughs> is the other one any better? Well, it's not. I'll tell you this way. My father's the chief of police, and he gets a lot of phone calls from the other one. Your father's a policeman? <laughs> yes, he's a copper. <laughs> your wife been living in Deerwood? Uh, no, no. She's uh, been living in New York, mostly. She, uh... Mary and I think you'd better go back to the seat. I'll be there in a moment. I'm uh, sorry, I don't know your name. Anderson, Doris Anderson. Please, Miss Anderson, don't mention any of this to your father. But you see, uh, this is very hard for me to say, but my wife, uh, there were times, uh, I don't know, it's quite possible she might have had some sort of record. Uh, for many years ago, of course, uh, that's all over now. I know it, I heard her voice on the phone. That's why I couldn't bear to have anything happen now that might spoil this. You see, that child there, that, that child needs her mother. I've done what I could, I know. I've known for a long time. Uh, that's why I ask you to... <sighs> I've said too much, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It's only that this means a great deal to me, Miss Anderson. I've been a policeman's daughter for a long time now. I've learned how not to talk. May I add, my father has a perfectly wonderful way of not hearing when I do slip. Thank you, Miss Anderson. Thank you. Well, what? I just got your daughter a cup of water, Mr. Uh, Furman. Lester Furman. I hope you have a lovely reunion at the Bristol, Mr. Furman. I only wish we could have found you a nicer setting. Thank you, Miss Anderson. Thank you.
Here with police. Huh? Up five. Five. It's for you, Chief. And ten more. It's the DA. He says it's important. What does he want, Joe? Excuse me. Yes, sure. Hello, Carol. Yeah? Well, what's on your mind? I see. Just a minute. You raise me again, Ben? Ten more. Come again. Shove in 20 for me, will you, George? Oh, sure. Here, Carol. Here. Well, who saw them? Well, just for your information, Wally Shane picked up Mr. Scarlatti at 6 p.m. this evening, and at 9.05, he was on the train to New York, handcuffed to one of our boys. Not at all. Thanks for calling. Well, how do we stand? You got me beat, Scott. Well, I'm thinking of calling you, Chief. Uh, uh -huh. Don't waste your money, George. Your wife needs slip covers for the living room. <laughs> oh, maybe you're right. I had three nines. What did you have? George, how long is it going to take you to learn that I never show my hand until I'm called? <laughs> <laughs> your deal, Doc. I've had enough. I have to take out... Mrs. Daliani's gallbladder at 8 in the morning. <laughs> what is the DA so hot about? Politics. He wants to catch me napping. Cannon fodder for election. You see what he's giving out about you and Wally? No, what? This is tomorrow morning's Chronicle. Personal interview with the DA. Yeah. <clears throat> what have we here in Deerwood, Mr. Carroll asked? Democracy? Not with this administration in power. It's royal succession. Take the case of our... Police Chief Scott Anderson. Mm -hmm. Mr. Anderson has hinted privately that he would retire next year. Which decision has our heartiest approval? He'd sure like to cut your heart out, Chief. Sir. Wait now, there's more. But who is being groomed to succeed him? It is 35-year-old Wally Shane, whose marriage to Mr. Anderson's daughter is scheduled for late this fall. How long are the citizens of this town going to close their eyes to... Ah, oh, stuff and stuff. Yeah, I've been wondering how long he'd wait to let go with that barrel. Yeah, he's all at Wally for stealing his thunder on that policy gang. Wally moves too fast for Mr. Carroll. He slipped down to New York and put the finger on that policy gang while the DA was still giving out interviews. <laughs> yeah, you owe 920, Doc. I begin to side with the DA. There's something crooked about this police force of ours around the poker table, if nowhere else. <laughs> I'll sue you for that. I'll take you again, Doc. Oh, Hi, hello, Wally. Wally. I am going to have to start an epidemic in this town to pay for my social life. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost time for the 111, Chief. You're going to meet Doris? I'm coming, Wally. I'll put the town to bed on the way. I'll come along with you. Okay. Hey! When did this get put up here? What's that? Oh, that came in late. I posted it about 10 o'clock. Oh, why don't you let a guy know? I could use 15 grand right about now. <laughs> you think too much about money, Wally. Well, the way things are in this town, a guy's got to think about the extras. You can't live on a coppers, babe. Well, the papers are right in on there on my desk. If you want to look at them, Wally. I'll drop by later. Well, we're going to meet that train. We better get started. I'm coming right away. Next time you're making up a game, let me know. I'll bring a bad check along. <laughs> good night, Doc. Oh, good night. A sore loser, oh. that's all he is. <laughs> well, good night, Ted. Good night, Chief. Good night, Pop. <laughs> Take it easy tonight now, will you? <laughs> and I hope I don't see you again tonight. Okay. Oh, she's leaving Valley Farms. Okay, let's go. Good evening, Chief. Well, what's going on with this railroad tonight? First thing you know, that 112 is going to be on time. I know. Caught me right in the middle of Dick Tracy, too. <laughs> Did, eh? That's what you get for you reading those money. So you know we can't quite laugh this off, Wally. The DA set the rockets back on our heels. We're in for a hot six weeks. Well, I guess I can take it if you can. He's going to make a big issue of Doris. You think it's that bad? One thing is certain. we got to be on our toes. One slip in the next few weeks, and he'll nail us to the wall. Well, I guess all we got to do is to do a little smarter than he is. I guess that won't be too hard. Uh, uh, Listen, friend, you wouldn't be catching the 112, would you? What? Oh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, wait, come on. Okay, wait a minute. Don't get so excited, will you? After it leaves, you've still got three minutes to catch it. Oh, gee, thanks. 
<laughs> Hi, oh, I thought you'd forgotten. <laughs> mm, darling, no, never do that. Hey, come on over here and say hello to my father. Dad, this is Mr. Furman and Marion. Marion, this is the policeman without the brass buttons. Hello. Hello there. How do you do? How do you do? Your daughter was so very nice to us on the train, Mr. Anderson. Where's Wally? Didn't he come with you? Yeah, he's out on the platform looking for you, dear. Oh, here he is. Hello. Oh. Nice day. Not half as nice as coming home. Well, who are your friends? Some very nice people. Come over and say hello. Marion, here's a whole front of brass buttons for you. Hello. Hello. He's a real policeman, isn't he? <laughs> he certainly is. Doris, I wonder if you'd excuse me for a second. I'd like to talk to Mr. Furman a minute. Of course, Dad. Marion, how'd you like some peanuts? I see a machine right over here. Sure. You don't mind, Mr. Furman? No, no, no. Mr. Furman, is that right? That's right, but I... Uh, you just got in from Philadelphia? Yes, that's right. I, I don't understand. Is something wrong? No, I don't know. What are you doing in Deerwood, Mr. Furman? Well, I came to meet my wife. She said she'd be at the Bristol. You, you see, we've been separated for some time. I see. Is there any reason why you couldn't have met her in Philadelphia? No, except she suggested Deerwood. Did you know that the Philadelphia police were looking for you? For me? I know, why? Murder. Huh. Murder? That's ridiculous. I, I... Should I frisk him, Chief? No, I don't think that'll be necessary, Wally, but I think we ought to walk over to the Bristol and make sure that Mrs. Furman is actually registered. There. But why? Why? I don't understand. I... Something's the matter with Dad. What is it? Oh. What have you done to Dad? Nothing. Nothing at all. But we're just going over to the hotel to look for your mother. But it's not a very nice hotel, so I thought it might be a better idea if you come home with Doris and me and spend the night there. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yes, Mary. What is it? Do you want me to go with them? Uh, yes, Mary. It's very good of Mr. Anderson to offer to put you up for the night. You mean you're not coming? I'll be there after a while. You go along with Miss Anderson. It's, it's very late now. You know. All right, if you say so. Come on, Mary, and the car's out this way. Mary. Good night, my child. Good night, Dad. Don't let them hurt you, Dad. Oh, I won't. I won't. Could she have a glass of milk before she goes to bed? Of course she could. Come on now, young lady. You don't believe me, do you? I don't know, Mr. Furman. I'll have to wait and see. We better get started. It's late. You ready? Is that ready? Come on. Broke him down yet, Wally? No. What was the stall about meeting his wife? What did he think that would get? But all I know is that he didn't find any wife at the hotel. <laughs> Listen, Furman, you don't have to tell me anything you don't want to, but if you're innocent as you say you are, you're not doing your case any good. But I've told you and told you and told you I never heard of a Paul Frank Dunlap. How could I have killed him? Do I look like someone who could murder a man? I don't know. My experience has been that no murderer ever looked like a murderer. But what more can I say? What more can I do? Let me look at that thing, Wally. Will you? This is you, isn't it? Yes. Where did you get this? From the Philadelphia police. Do you recognize it? Yes, but I... I don't understand. I don't... This isn't... How did they get hold of this picture? That picture was taken 12 years ago. So? I didn't look like this then. This picture's been touched up. Touched up? Yes, look. I had a mustache then. You see, it's been removed. And lines have been added to the face. And shadows here. They've made my hair gray. My hair wasn't gray then. I was under 30. How can you be so sure that it was touched up? Because I know this picture. You see that edge of sleeve there in that hand? That was my wife's hand. We had this picture taken together. Where's the original of that picture? I don't know. I haven't seen it in years. Could your wife have had it? Oh, stop asking questions. Stop. Listen, Furman, I'm asking questions for your own good. You're going to have to answer sooner or later, and it's better that you answer now. All right. That picture was taken two months before Ethel and I were married. She was only 18. 
I was 29. She was working in a restaurant then in Philadelphia. A waitress? Yes, a waitress. A waitress at an all-night quick lunch. She was poor. I offered her an escape. I didn't realize it then, but I think she fell in love with what I had to offer, more than with me. She wanted all the things that money could buy. But because I'd always had too much, I'd grown sick of those things. I despised them. I think that's what brought us together. It also drove us apart. She was young, she was restless. And then after the child was born, she she became irritable, depressed. In the end, she ran away. She took nothing with her, nothing except the last fifty dollars I'd given her for household expenses. She must have hated me very much, because she didn't want anything of mine near her, not even her own child, because she was also my child. That's why I can't believe she kept that picture. Why should she? She hated me. Now, whose idea was this reunion? Mine. You see, I'd never completely lost hope. I, I kept writing every month or so. Mm -hmm. Finally, she answered. She asked to see me. I didn't tell her I was bringing Marion along. I thought it might just make a difference. Well, where's this Paul Frank Dumlet uh, come in? I don't know. I've never heard of him. Quite the story. Yes, quite a story. I'll say this, though, Furman, if you're lying, you're doing a pretty good job. I'm not lying. Why should I lie? I've nothing to hide. Maybe you haven't, but with this thing facing us, I have no choice. I've got to lock you up for the night, Furman. You're accused of murder. I can't let you go until the Philadelphia police get here tomorrow. After that, you're in their hands. I understand. But just one thing more. I, I don't want my child to worry. You'll do everything you can. Naturally, but I have an idea that she's been asleep for a couple of hours by now, so we won't have to worry about that until the morning. Oh, I don't know what to think. I can't seem to think anything right now. My headaches. May I please have some aspirin? Not uh, sure. I've got some right here, as a matter of fact. Here. There's three in there. Take them all. Thanks. Come on. Bring it up, George. Furman's gonna spend the night with us. Okay, Wally. Yeah, take it easy with him. Will you? Oh, oh, sure. Come on, mister. Don't worry about your daughter, Mr. Furman. I'll take care of her. Walk right in, Mr. Furman. We haven't had anybody in our host gal for three days. You'll have the whole place to yourself, just like a suite at the Ritz. <laughs> If you want anything, just let me know. Thanks, I will. Well, what do you make of it, Wally? I don't know. Pretty screwy story. Yeah, pretty screwy. But just screwy enough to be true. That we'll know in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> and that's only two or three hours away. Can I drive you home? Oh, sure, thanks. I forgot. Doris has the car, hasn't she? George, hmm? I'll bring you back a container of coffee. Oh, thanks. That would go good. <laughs> Don't be cheating yourself at solitaire while I'm gone. No. George! Yeah. What? He did what? When? I see. I see. I was right here all the time, Chief. And when Wally came in off his beat a while ago, there he was. The Chronicle, sure. And the Philadelphia police. And, and who? Oh. Oh, Doc Camsley. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, Doc. 
But he can't do him any good now, Scott. The guy is dead. that you've seen part one of Two Sharp Knives, let's turn to our Westinghouse program. Extra, extra, lady reveal secret. <laughs> well, it sounds like there was a mystery here. There was. Every Monday afternoon, the neighbors noticed that Mrs. Evelyn Gunther of Bird Street in Richmond, Virginia, was all through with her laundry while they were still busy with theirs. How come? Well, Mrs. Gunther wrote us a letter and revealed her secret. There it is, the Westinghouse laundromat. Listen to Mrs. Gunther's letter. My washing and ironing time has been cut from two days a week to half a day. And Mrs. Gunther says that her wonderful laundromat has already started to do her day's wash while she's having breakfast. And what's more, she hasn't had a single laundry bill since she bought her laundromat because it washes everything. It washes curtains, and slip covers, and even feather pillows. Now, she also saves on soap and water, too. Because of this wonderful Westinghouse exclusive feature, the water saver. Now, of course, the Westinghouse laundromat does large nine pound loads. But suppose you have a small wash like this. Now, other washers would use the same amount of water as they would for a large size load. But with the laundromat, you just set the water saver dial at low. Now, that means that it will use exactly the right amount of water to get this bundle spotless clean. Now, for any size load, small, medium, or large, here's the amount of water that you'd have to have in other washers. But for this load, here's all the water that the laundromat uses. And don't forget that it costs money to heat water. Now, naturally, with so much less water, you'll use lots less soap. And then, here's all you do. You just slip the clothes in, start the laundromat, and your job is done. The laundromat washes, rinses, damp dries. Why, it even cleans itself and shuts off automatically. <laughs> no wonder Mrs. Gunther is in love with her laundromat. Why, she has lots more time to go visiting, see a movie, or go shopping. When you're shopping, why not stop in at my store? I'll be proud to show you the famous Westinghouse laundromat. It's the quality automatic washer. When you come in my store to see the laundromat, let me wash a load of your clothes. Let me prove to you why the laundromat is the quality washer. And it's so easy to own a laundromat because Westinghouse dealers have a convenient payment plan available to you. Come on in and ask about it. Now let's return to Studio One and Two Sharp Knives. Quite obviously, this is the stool Furman stood on. Now then, I would like to demonstrate something for you, gentlemen. Hold it, D.A. The point I want to make, gentlemen, is that an incident of this sort could not have taken place without the greatest negligence on the part of the police. Can we quote you on that, Mr. Carroll? You certainly may. Mm -hmm. Now then, gentlemen, I would like you to be quiet for a moment and listen. That's all, just listen. You all heard the sound that stool made when it fell. Remember, Herman was here in this cell. He was not down at the end of the block. Can any of you imagine a man sitting or standing not more than eight feet away who wouldn't have heard the sound that stool made when it fell? If indeed there was anyone there. In other words, gentlemen, it is my contention that either the cell block was unattended or the attendant was asleep or he deliberately ignored the noise because 
But I prefer not to entertain this last assumption since its implications are too close to criminal complicity. The other possibilities are sufficiently damning to the efficiency and integrity of Mr. Anderson's police administration. Is that on the record, Mr. Carroll? It is. Let Anderson answer it any way he can. Now, gentlemen, I would like to point something further out to you. That's the matter of the time element. Herman was booked into this cell at 1.37 this morning. He was not admitted to the block, however, until 3.20. Not back yet, George. Not yet. The DA has been yelling for you for an hour, Doc. Where is he? He's in there with the press and a couple of his henchmen. He's been making a political speech for one hour solid. You'd think that Scott hung this Furman up himself with his own two hands. I wish Scott were here. I'd like to see him. Yeah, so do I. Any minute, I'm expecting Carol to come in here and open fire on me. After all, I'm the guy that was supposed to be in guarding him when it happened. Well, there you are, Doc. I was wondering how long it'd take you to get out your report. I've got it here. There are a lot of things I'd like to check first before I put it through. Yeah, such as? Whatever I find will be in the report, Carol. Well, it seemed to me to be a perfectly clear case. Unless you'd like to check with Anderson first. Of course, if Anderson were here on the job, it'd be a lot easier for all of us to check with him. I don't like that, Carol. Oh, neither do I. Neither, I believe, are the people of Deerwood going to like it. Politics are your racket, Carol. And up to a point, they're not too hard to live with. But there is a point beyond which they get just plain dirty. Right now, I got a feeling they're dirty. So have I. You want to keep your skirts clean, Camsley? I suggest you quit stalling on that report and get it through. You'd just love it to read murder, wouldn't you? Was it? No. It was suicide. Motive unknown. Now see what you can make of that. There's a copy for your personal files. This is for the chief. Come on over to my office, gentlemen. Uh, there may be some rather interesting information out of Philadelphia by now. Oh. When Anderson comes in, you might tell him to phone me. I'd like to speak to him on the phone, at least. Yeah. Yeah, all right. I get it. Yep. Well, I think that's something you ought to tell the chief yourself. Yeah. Well, he'll be here in a minute. I'll have him call you back. What was that? Philadelphia. Something fishy about this, George. I don't know what it is, but they're all excited. Well, here's the doc's report. Scott will want to see it as soon as he comes in. Yeah, I certainly will. What is that? Is that the fans report? Yeah. We'll Better call it. Philly right away, Chief. Something's up. Get him on the phone, will you, George? Sure. Did you find anything? No, not a thing. I went over to the hotel to see if anybody had registered, but not a soul since last night. Yeah, right. Carol's been here for two hours. You're going to try to boil us in oil for this one. Yeah, he might make it stick, too, if we don't clean it up. Oh, Philly on the line, boss. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is Chief Anderson speaking. Yeah. You got my wire about Furman? Yeah. I see. What's that? What's that? Are you... But are you sure? I see. Okay, very well. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. What did they say? What's the matter, Scott? Well, that makes it just a little more binding. There wasn't any Paul Frank Dunlap murdered in Philly. They haven't any unsolved murder of the 26th of last month. They never even heard of Lester Furman. And the agency that sent out that circular doesn't exist. It was a forgery. I don't get it. It's a very elaborate frame-up. Someone went to a lot of pain. I still don't get it. No, neither do I. But if somebody was trying to get him, the suicide angle doesn't make any sense. None. There's a very nasty smell about this. This is the kind of a smell that the DA likes. Let me see that report again. Sure. Yeah, that was a tough break, Wally. You almost had that 15,000 in your mitt. Yeah, and there are lots of ways I could have spent it, too. Well, there's only one thing I know to do. Yeah, what? It's not very pretty, but we've got to question Furman's kid. Does she know yet? No, Doris does, but I told her to keep it quiet for a while. This is a dirty job, Wally, but I'm afraid it's right in your lap. I want you to go out there and get Doris and the youngster and bring him back here. Should I tell the kid? No, it might be better to let Doris. I should be back in about a half hour. Okay.
George. Yeah? I know you had a couple of drinks last night, but tell me, what actually did happen? Did you fall asleep? Yes, I guess I did, Chief. Well, could anybody have gotten past you into that cell block? Not unless they took the keys out of my pants' pocket. Well, from the time that Wally and I left until he brought you back your coffee, did you have anything to drink? Yes, one little one. Could it have been doped? I don't see how. No, neither do I. Okay, Georgie, never mind, forget about it. Why would anyone send out a circular like this for a man that isn't wanted? Chief. What is it, Joe? Uh, Doc Kamsey's here to see you. Okay, send him in. Excuse me, George. Oh, sure. Come on in, Ben. Glad to see you. Hello, Scott. Sit down. Hello. Got my report? Yeah. Do you believe it? Why, certainly. Why shouldn't I? It wasn't accurate. You... I covered for you, Scott. You did what? You... What do you mean you covered for me? What are you saying? Furman... Didn't hang himself, Scott. He was murdered. He was dead before his body was strung up to that pipe. Well, how was he killed? A blow. Up here, under the hair. He never knew what hit him. Do you? I know pretty much what hit him. What I'm wondering is who. Yeah. <laughs> and so am I. Bill did all right, didn't he? Oh, yeah. A swell press he got. I gotta hand him that. The verdict is suicide right across the board. Yeah. What time is it? At uh, quarter of 11. Say, Ethel ought to be here by now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Her train gets in at 10 5. Ah, oh, and he's jerk what a dump you never can tell. Get your big seat out of the way. Besides, the train could have been a half hour late. Yeah, but she ain't smart like Bill. I suppose you know that. Oh, she's nuts about him, isn't she? That's enough to keep a dame in line for quite some time. Yeah, you think that she really can't tell herself he's gonna marry her? <laughs> That's what I mean. She's dumb. Look, what are you worrying about? That's Bill's problem. He can handle it without any help from you or me either. Yeah. Besides the jingle of a half a million bucks, boy, that's sweet music to any woman's ear. Yeah, I still say you can't be sure, you know. I'd feel a lot better if she hadn't had that crack up last year. You know what Doc Green says? No. He says she's got, uh, she's, uh, psychotic. That's what he said. What's that mean? Nuts? Well, now, look, if you'd improve your mind like me, you'd know that there ain't no such thing as nuts. All of us is nuts. Some more, some less. I'm less. That is a matter of opinion. Whose? Why will a dame always make it personal? Now, look, I'm just trying to carry on a little intellectual conversation. Now, you're talking to yourself, then. I am not. I'm talking to you. Look, all of us has got something. Some has got neuroses and some has got psychoses. And psychoses is the worst. That is, unless you know how to handle it. See? But the people, what makes the real trouble is what they call um, normals. Who says I make trouble? And who says you're normal? I do. Oh, listen, baby. You start getting abnormal now, right me, around... Now, you to get... Wait. That's it. Well, let her in. Mm -hmm. Andy. Mm How -hmm. many times do I have to knock? Come on, don't stand there. Come on in. What kept you so long? Well, the train was late. Did anybody see you coming in? No, I don't think so. Now, look, are you sure that that... Clerk in that New York hotel saw you early this morning? Yes, I got him to cash a check for me. And did you give the doorman a tip like I told you? Yeah, a dollar. Did you tell him what it was for? Sure. I said I wanted to get a taxi fast because I had to catch an early train to Deerwood to meet my husband and I'd missed my train last night. <sighs> okay. Where's Bill? Oh, he's laying low. I saw the morning paper at the station when I got in. Bill did all right, didn't he? Huh? Did you ever think he wouldn't? Oh, gosh, I'm tired. I didn't sleep much last night. Why not? You weren't getting soft about this Furman again, were you? What business is it of yours, what I was thinking? Hey, look, give me a cigarette, I'm off. Sure, kid. Thanks. I smoked a whole pack on the train. Thanks. Gee, hasn't Bill even called? No, nah, he's got sense. 
wish I could see him before I go down there. Why? Well, I don't know. I, I'd just like to. You're nervous, ain't you? Yeah, a little. Now, look, kids, you better get over that before you go up in front of those cops. Come on, how about a drink? No, but... Gee, I sure wish I could do this some other way. Well, you can't. Look, this plane's got to look on the level. First, you were going to meet him, and then you made a date with him, and then you were going to go back with him, and if you just kind of accidentally missed the train, well, let me tell you something. If they think this date was a phony, you're going to look pretty sick. Yeah, I guess you're right. I only hope they don't grill me. I hate the way cops have of asking questions. You've got a simple story. Stick to it. Yeah, all right. Gee, uh, I look old, don't I? You look your age, baby. And at your age, you ain't gonna get many more chances. No, I... I suppose that's right. Well, might as well get it over with. Sure. See you inside an hour. Oh, I hope it's sooner than that. Well, it won't be, and it mustn't be much longer, either. Yeah, that's right. Mustn't be. Well, wish me luck? You bet I do. Luck, kid. Thanks. Well, what do you think? I think she's an amateur, that's what I think, and I wish she wasn't. Hey, come on. Mix me a drink. You said it for both of us. Why did he do it? He must have had some reason. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Neither do we, Mary. But he wanted to meet Mommy. He wanted her to come back. Why isn't she here? That's what we're trying to find out, Mary. You did it. You killed him. He'd never have left her like well, this. There's no sense going on with this now. No. <laughs> come in. What is it, Joe? What do you want her to do, boss? Well, I... I better take the kid outside. Yeah, wait a minute, will you, Joe? Doris, I wonder if you'd mind waiting outside for a minute, dear, will you? I've got somebody I have to talk to. I'll call you just a moment after. Of course, Dad. Will you come with me, Marion? What difference does it make? We can wait right inside here. Mrs. Furman? Yes. Won't you sit down? Thanks. How did it happen? How did it happen? I don't know, Mrs. Furman. But why? Why? We were all set to come back together again. It's what he wanted for years. Why'd you throw him into jail? What had he done? Don't you know? No. We acted on information that we thought was quite reliable. Murder? Oh, that isn't possible. Why, Lester never hurt anyone. Including you? I hurt him much more than he ever hurt me. Oh, there's something wrong. There must be. Perhaps more than you know, Mrs. Furman. This circular was faked. Faked? Well, how? Why? You see, I haven't seen Lester in ten years. He told us that you had asked him to meet you here. Did you? Yes, I'd... I'd been a fool for a long time. I wanted him to take me back. Well, if it meant so much to you, why didn't you meet him here, or... Uh, or did you, Mrs. Fern? Uh, no, you see, I... I missed the last train out of New York last night. I, I caught the earliest train I could this morning. And now... <laughs> well, he was such a gentle guy. Why did anyone want... Why did anyone want? Coroner's report calls it suicide. Want to accuse him of murder. Did you ever see this picture before, Mrs. Furman? No. Well, oh, yeah. Yes, of course I have. But, gee, it's different. Something's been done to him. That's right. It's been touched up. It was taken in Atlantic City before we were married. Did you ever have the original of this picture, Mrs. Furman? Once, yes, but that was before I left him. You see, when I cleared out, I was fed up. I, I thought I hated him. I didn't take anything with me to remind me of him. I see. Well, your story seems to hold up pretty well, Mrs. Furman. I don't see any reason for holding you. There's only one thing. When Furman got off the train last night, he wasn't alone. What? No, there was someone with him, Mrs. Furman. Who? Just a minute.
Someone here I want you to meet. Who is it? Mary? Yes, this is your daughter, Mrs. Furman. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Why weren't you here last night? Why weren't oh, you? Let me look at you. Let me look at you. If you've been here, this never would have happened. Why weren't you? I didn't know, darling. If I'd known, I'd never have missed that train. You... Come back, mommy. Please come back. Ted wanted you to. He wanted it for so long. Oh, I'll come back. Take her away. Take her out of here. Mommy! Get her out! Mary. Get her out! Mommy! Mary, come along, dear. Come along. You go on back to Doris. I'll see you in just a moment. Go along. Oh, you have to drag the kid into it. You missed the train on purpose. Why didn't he ever tell me I had a kid like that? Gee, I never expected... You missed the train on purpose? Yes, yes! Sit down, Mrs. Furman. Oh. So it wasn't suicide after all, was it? No. It was murder, wasn't it? Why didn't he ever tell me about it? Why didn't he tell me? I know you've got a perfect alibi. You were in New York, but you know who did it, don't you, Mrs. Furman? Yes, I... Who? Bill. Who's Bill? I won't tell you. You've tricked me. You can't make me tell. Who's Bill, Mrs. Furman? I won't tell you. You'll never make me tell. Who's Bill, Mrs. Furman? I won't. I won't. I won't. Now, let's pause for a moment and look at our program again. Don't look ten years older. <laughs> well, I should say not. That's something you certainly don't want to have happen. And it needn't happen because a woman can stay young looking longer if she'll just cut out those back-breaking chores that she doesn't have to do these days. Now, here's a household appliance that cuts out one of the heaviest household chores of all. The new Westinghouse clothes dryer. You've no idea until you own one what a heavy load it takes off your shoulders. I'm going to show you some pictures to prove it to you. <laughs> Look, that's me lugging in a heavy load of clothes to dry. Now, no woman need do that ever again if she has a Westinghouse clothes dryer. And there I am again, this time, dashing in with some clothes because it's raining. Now, with a Westinghouse dryer, you'd never have to think about the weather because any day is a perfect drying day. Now, let's see how this wonderful Westinghouse dryer works. You just take the clothes from the laundromat, spotless clean, and drop them into the clothes dryer. Then, for clothes that need ironing, you just set the dial at damp. Just think, you never need hand sprinkle again if you own a Westinghouse clothes dryer. Then, for clothes that don't need ironing, you set the dial at dry. And they come out sweet and as sweet smelling as a June breeze. And lots fluffier, too. Let me show you. Now, here are six towels that were actually dried outdoors. And here are six of the same towels dried in a Westinghouse clothes dryer. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it? But you'll believe it when you have your Westinghouse clothes dryer. Yes, remember, you can buy the Westinghouse twins, the laundromat and dryer, on proof. You can watch them wash and dry a load of your own clothes in my store absolutely free. And by the way, we have a convenient payment plan that makes it easy for you to get rid of those heavy workday chores. I'll be looking for you. We return now to Two Sharp Knives. What time is it now? Uh, 6.25, maybe a little later. Seven hours she's been gone. Ah, well, maybe small-town cops don't ask questions as fast as big city cops. Cut it. Did it strike you funny that we haven't heard from Bill either? Yeah. You don't suppose they could have blown and left us holding the bag, do you? I wouldn't put it past either one of them. Hey, that must be Bill. Wait. Huh? 
Who is it? Bill. You ought to know better than leave me standing out there in the hall. What kept you so long? Give me a drink. I've been in headquarters. Yeah? Well, where's, where's that one? What about She's it? still there. Well, how's she doing? I wish I knew. Thanks. She's been closeted with the chief since morning. He wouldn't have kept her there that long. He hadn't been getting places. You mean to tell me you think she's begun to sing? Yeah, I think she's close to it. Now, the chief sprang Furman's kid on her. What? The kid is here? Yeah. Yeah, I had a hunch that kid would cause trouble the minute I laid eyes on her. Look, Bill, you haven't told us yet why you came here. I came because I think Scott's getting warm. You mean you think we ought to blow, is that it? And leave a half million dollars lying around? Not exactly. Well, what else is it to do? You mean to tell me that you think this Anderson is getting that warm? Mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah. He's smart. Plenty smart. Yeah, I think he's that warm. And who else? He don't pass much along when he's on a case besides. He's been alone with her most of the day. The only other person they talk to is the DA. And he won't tell him what time it is. Yeah, yeah. It looks to me like we've got to take care of one more person, Hotcha. Yeah. Hey, don't look at me like I'm a small town cop. I know what the score is just as well as you do. That ain't saying I like it. Scott's the right guy. Listen, Sonny, you're in the big time now. You ain't in high school. Now, look, I can figure percentages just as well as you can. I know what's got to be done. That don't mean I got to do it. There's other ways. Yeah? Well, who's in a better spot than you? Maybe you, maybe Hotcha. No, no, wait a wait minute. Wait a minute. We can't get into headquarters as you can. And you know that, Bill. Things don't always go the way you want them to. They go like they gotta go. Yeah, and Scott's gotta go. And you better commence think about when and how, because we ain't got much time. Maybe I've been thinking. One of the things I've been thinking is that this might be just as good a spot as any to do the job. Here? Yeah. yeah. Might just be that I can get him to come here alone. Yeah? Well, go on. Well, it figures out something like this. I go back, yeah. and I walk into Scott's office, and I say to Now, let me review this, Mrs. Freeman, just to make sure that I've got it straight. You met this Bill in New York some two months ago. He was from Detroit, part of a policy gang. That's right. And he made quite a play for you. He even talked about getting married, but you couldn't do that because you were still married to Furman. That's right. So he came up with this idea of getting rid of Furman. The fact that you were going to inherit $500,000 from his will didn't hurt any, I gather. That's right. But you weren't there. You were in New York. He did the whole job. That's right. You realize, of course, that this makes you an accessory before the fact. You're just as guilty of murder as he is, Mrs. Furman. Yes. There's only one way I can help you, and that is by... you turn this bill over to us. But I can't. I don't know where he is. On the other hand, if I let you go, he's bound to find you. I don't know where or when or how, but he's certainly going to find you. Yeah, I suppose he will. Well, that's the chance we've got to take, then. The luck depends on you, Mrs. Furman. They're going to suspect you, and you know that. And if they ever find out what's going on in here today, they'll get rid of you in five minutes. You're going to have a tough job convincing them. And don't underestimate how tough. I don't. Well, that's about all, then, I guess. You can... Go now, if you want to. No, could I? Could I see the kid for a minute first? Now, how are you going to explain to her that you're walking out and leaving her alone for the second time? Yeah, I guess that's right. Would you take care of her for me? And... I'll take care of her, Mrs. Well, I guess that's that. George. Oh, yeah, Chief. <clears throat> I'm releasing Mrs. Furman. He'll give you all the information you want in case you need her. Goodbye, Mrs. Furman. Thanks. Thanks. Right over here, Mr. Clark. Joe. Yes, Chief. Where's Wally? He came in about five minutes ago. He's in the locker room. Go down and tell him I want to see him, will you? Yeah. Hello, Wally. Where have you been? Oh, just out in the deadbeat. Nothing to it. Wait till you see the Chronicle tomorrow. You'll think you'll start better, better start looking for another job. Well, Carol's got us over a barrel, hasn't he? Well, he thinks he has, but I'm not so sure that he has. That's the reason I want you to come with me now. This might be quite a break for you, Wally. Just the sort of break that might make you chief of police by public acclaim. You're that hot, huh? It's open and shut. I've got to go out and give George some instructions. I'll be right back and pick you up. Okay. Hello, Bristol. Give me four or three. 
Hello, Chicago. It's Bill. Look, get packed and ready to blow. Yeah, in a few minutes, Anderson and I are gonna pay you a little visit. We'll be alone. You all set? All set. Okay, let's go. got him to come over here. I don't know, but I certainly don't like it. You should get out of here first and let him do it alone. I don't trust him. I want to see it done right. Hey, that's not Bill. Come in. Hello. Well, all packed, I see. Where did you come from? I thought by this time they'd had you in jail. Oh, they didn't have anything on me. They tried all day to break the alibi. It stood up. They had to let me go. They had no choice. Now, well, we heard it different. What? We heard you had quite a little trouble. What kind of trouble? The kid, for one thing. That came as quite a surprise. Oh, yeah, to me, too. Well, sure, they tried to be tough at first, but they had nothing to go on, so they let me go. Yeah? Well, what about the kid? Well, what did I want with her? Strange, if you were so in the clear, you'd think they'd let you bring the kid along with you. I didn't want it. No. Who wants a kid? Yeah, who wants a kid, particularly if you're going to try to put the finger on some folks for the cops? Me? Yeah, you. Why not? Bill's crazy about the kid. He wouldn't have mind if you'd brought it along. He'd been glad to have it. Oh, Bill's never seen her. He's never even heard of her. Oh, no. He was here just a little while ago. His story is quite different. Quite different. Oh, that's crazy. Well, how did Bill ever... Sit down, Bill. Look, all I'm trying to tell you is... We're listening. I'm just trying to say... What? Oh, you got it all wrong. You don't think... Shut up. You keep her quiet, and I'll take care of the rest. Won't you go? I came to see Mrs. Furman. Bill, shut up. Yes, and Bill. Well, uh, won't you come in, Anderson? Thanks very much. We've been waiting to see you. Uh, well, it looks as though I recognize the entire gang. There's a couple of you I don't haven't seen before, but it looks like that policy gang that Wally was mixed up in New York a couple of months back. Well, you seem to have me fairly well covered. What's the idea? A conference or a ride? Sit down, Anderson. Oh, thanks. All right, first you hot job. <laughs> I didn't do this. I didn't. I know you didn't, Mrs. Furman. It was Bill, wasn't it? Bill has quite a way with the ladies. He's going to marry my daughter in a few months. Or maybe he didn't tell you that. Bill? Yes, right after election. Shut up. Now, quiet, both of you, because you'll have plenty of time to talk when we're away. And we ain't got much time. All right, get to it, hot shot. <laughs> Take care of you, Palsy. Put your hands back here. Come on. Now, Bill. You start that little smudge pot. Oh, you okay, okay, what's going on here? Okay, you okay, Chief? Sure, just about time. Okay, Georgie, thanks. I'll take care of this. Sorry, Wally, but while you were loading your gun, I was a little busy, too. Usually, I trust Wally do this job alone with me, but I couldn't trust Bill. You're under arrest, all of you. No, wait a minute. I didn't oh, have anything to do with it. Don't tell me how innocent you are. A jury will decide that. Me too. You too, Mrs. Furman, and Bill. Take him away and lock him up. Let's go. Now listen, Anderson. Shut I up. I never saw this guy in Shut up, house. I said. Mr. Anderson, my daughter. I'll take care of her. She can have a home with Doris and me just as long as she wants, Mrs. Furman. Well, you've thought about it all along, haven't you? Yes, I thought about it. And knew about it. All along, long before it ever made sense, Wally. But I kept hoping that it wasn't true. I knew that no outsider could get past George Proffer into that cell block. It had to be an inside job. And a lot of things broke wrong. Yeah. 
What made you do it, Wally? That policy gang give you an itch for easy money? Yeah, that and the fact that I thought we were finished politically. I thought that I could outsmart you. I thought you were getting old. I am getting old. And I didn't want this job any longer. But now it looks as though I'm going to have to keep on being a cop. I've got a couple of more people to support than I counted on. I guess I wasn't as smart as I thought I was. No, I guess not. And I'm sorry, too, Willie. Because, you know, I always liked you. Yeah, I know you did. That's what I was counting on. Let's go, Willie. Sure is a strong word. But over the years, we at Westinghouse have learned to live by that word. Tonight's story of the sureness behind every Westinghouse product begins in the early days of aviation when accidents were frequent. But nowadays, wind tunnels like this make air travel safe and sure. Scientists reproduce actual flight conditions right in the tunnel. For instance, this airplane model is being pre-tested by a man-made tornado to unlock new secrets of flight. Air is hurtled through the wind tunnel by this Westinghouse 40,000 horsepower electric motor, one of the largest in the world. Enough power is developed by this giant to haul a freight train eight miles long. And the blast of wind through the tunnel blows six times faster than a hurricane. Whether it's a giant motor to help pre-test airplanes or a tiny one for this electric mixer. If it's a product for home or business, for farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Others in the cast of Two Sharp Knives were Peggy French, Richard Purdy, Hildy Parks, Robert Emhart, Seth Arnold, William Lee, Tony Halloran, Paul Porter, Richard Robbins, Abe Vigoda, Roland Wood, Charles Kuhn, Dick Martin, Frank Marth, John Vivian, Len Lesser, William Witt, Elmer Lear, and Judith Rich. This is Paul Brinson saying goodnight for Westinghouse, inviting you to be with us again next week. Meanwhile, why not phone your own local Westinghouse dealer or drop in to see him. Tell him you'd like him to pick up a bundle of your own clothes. Remember, he'll be glad to wash and dry them in the Westinghouse laundromat and dryer at no charge to you so that you can see the Westinghouse twins in action and see how they do your clothes. I know you'll find it a mighty interesting demonstration. And now until...